Path of Exile 2's PC gaming show. Okay, what's this? I almost like instinctively clicked on the screen to like make it just load in faster. It seems the old ways still hold some power. Come on, me. Oh. This is a lot of the gameplay we've seen this before. That's so fucking badass. I think I, I want to play a barbarian or like whatever the two-handed, you know, berserker class is. Just for the class fantasy in this game. Because I bet there's going to be a lot of cool things you can do. Wow. I never saw this cinematic before. Is this like where you wash up on the shores? It's a Karui. Oh, you click on that, it tells you about Calm. I am Mark Roberts, and I am a game director on Path of Exile 2. Path of Exile 2 is a game where you start very immersed in the world and over time can grow to be, have the power of a god, wiping yep. out screens and screens of monsters and creatures in this dark, gothic horror world. And you can do it is kind of crazy. Like, people sleep on this, but the reality is that, like, PoE has, like, some of the most insane power scaling in any fucking game. It's actually fucking insane. Like, you go from just, like, fighting, uh, you know, boars and shit like that, to where, like, you're fighting eldritch, you know, fucking Lovecraftian abominations that exist, like, trans-dimensionally. Through deep itemization systems... Yeah, you're fighting, you start off fighting crabs. Any character you could ever hope to imagine. It's a whole, whole lot of fun. Yeah, killing a god is Quite like, a that's only halfway through the game. Especially the uh, Act 4 around the Karui Archipelago comes from mm -hmm. New Zealand nature. And um, I've grown up here my whole life. And it's very, that's very nice pleasing place. to see so much of New Zealand's nature. Like the trees uh, from the Pahutakawa through to the uh, Nikau. We've got cabbage trees uh, all being represented mm -hmm. in game. And from a creature perspective, since I'm yeah, it looks amazing. more my forte, we have a lot of the birds. Um, so there's critters you can find on these islands. You've got... Is there a toucan? Even the insects. You've got the New Zealand weta. You've got uh, rowers, which are based on the moa of New Zealand. And even things like the tui, which we just saw fly just past moments ago. Holy you may shit. think, well, how does that work in a dark horror gothic game? And where most of the game is to that style, we do break away from that a little bit and get you outside into exterior areas where it shows Yeah, I think that's one of the nice things about a game like this is that it can show kind of different environments and having like a larger spectrum just makes the game feel more complete rather than everything just looking the exact same. It's only to then bring you right back into that gore and horror environment. Or we put interesting twists on it so that there is something sinister going on. Like one example with one of the islands we have in mm -hmm. Act 4 is that, sure, the island seems super peaceful. It seems like this beautiful New Zealand island sure. or Pacific island. Actually, but there's though, like, no, it's not, because look at him. Yeah, you just, you literally just look at him and <laughs> fuck. There have been a bunch of the Karui people who have tried to settle there and mm -hmm. they keep getting killed and eaten by something. What's happening is that these horrific siren creatures come out of the caves underneath the island at night and eat everyone. And oh. all of a sudden now this very pristine, amazing island has this backstory to it that's just filled with, you know, monstrous atrocities. Um, but it still allows us to get these beautiful trees and animals and uh, all this into the game and it's just not something I've ever seen in any other game personally and I think a lot of people- I think that's interesting. Like, I hope they add in, like, more of a story to it. Because, like, even... See, here's the thing. Is, like, I look at the graphics, and the graphics are amazing. Like, these are definitely, like... This is the kind of stylizing that I really like. And so it makes me think of, like, Lost Ark, for example. Where, like, there were the different islands that you could go to. And, like, the Lost Ark graphics, I feel like, suck. I, I think they suck. And, uh... If this game had some of that vibe, I would be so happy. People are really going to appreciate it's that. It's incredible, it's, yeah. Uh, it's the second best thing to uh, coming here in person, honestly. 
It's Unreal 3? Yeah, it's so Unreal 3. So my name's Jonathan Rogers, and I'm the game director on Path of Exile 2. So one of the things I've really enjoyed uh, when designing Path of Exile 2 is mm -hmm. just being able to surprise team members by the kind of changes that we're willing to do. So uh, when I suggested, yeah. hey, maybe we should have WASD controls for our characters as well as click to move. Being thank willing to you. Make Fucking thank you. It is so crazy to me that this is not a default. I'm so glad that PoE did this. Because now, now I, I don't have to hear from people, well, it's not the way an ARPG should be because you like PoE and PoE doesn't have it. Yeah, well, now it fucking has it, so shut up, put it in Diablo 2. Those kind of changes to actually make the game better, I think is something that's going to, you know, really impress existing players as well as new players coming yeah. to the game who uh, maybe thought they weren't interested in playing before. Diablo 2, Diablo 4 2. Looks really nice, man. That's a really nice fucking place. Holy shit. It's actually badass. I've never actually really seen their offices. Oh my god. Is that Malachi? And one of the things we really wanted to make sure that we were doing with it um, is to make the action combat really, really excellent. We just want yeah. to make sure that anyone playing the game, you know, you can play it like an action game, feels fun to play, you know, we've added... You know what's so crazy to me about this is, like, every single time that they show, like, a new clip of PoE 2, there's, like, another boss. Like, I think I've personally seen, like, probably 20 different bosses in PoE 2 so far. We've added things like dodge rolls and like hack canceling things like this, and right. it just means that the the, the game just yeah we've a seen lot this guy before, um, as well as everything else that you'd expect from a, a sequel mm -hmm. to Path of Exile. One thing in particular that sets Path of Exile apart is obviously the depth, but in the itemization systems, yeah. crafting systems, but also the sheer number of quantity of monsters, encounters. Like we have over a decade of content that is going to be available in Path of Exile 2 as well. That's going to be fucking crazy. Like, I wonder how much of it is going to get ported over in, like, the same way that it's in PoE 1. Like, I'm going to be really curious to see what that's going to be like. Because that's one of the big weaknesses new games have whenever they come out. Is like, how do you compete with PoE whenever PoE has 10 years of context into it, right? 10 years of development into it. It's really hard. No heist. I think they're going to have heist. We really want to keep the mechanics from Path of Exile 1 that are great, but we can yeah. now have the opportunity to rebuild them or restructure them in a way that is easier to understand and much more accessible for someone coming at it for the first time and keep that depth there either hidden away or much more natural to understand. I think there's a big difference. Yeah, I think that's definitely a massive, like, really good goal to have. Because for me, I know that, like, whenever I show people stuff in Path of Exile, most people don't even start playing the game because they just see how prohibitively complex it is. And, like, again, should they make the game less complex? I don't think that they should make it less complex, but they should try to remove things that are hard to perceive, if that makes sense, right? Like, uh... Like, one thing that would be really, really nice is that if in-game, and they have this, but it's not very good, uh, they, like, Lost Ark has something called a codex, where it explains every mechanic, everything that how, how things work, and it just gives you an idea of, like, how these different mechanics fit together. And in PoE, I think that you need that. Like, from my perspective, I think that any time that you have to use a third-party tool in order to understand something about a game... That's a failure of the game. Like, straight up, it's that simple. Like, any time that you can't figure it out just by playing the game, that's it. It's between depth and complexity. Path yeah, of exactly. Exile 2, in some ways, is less complicated than Path of Exile 1 because good. we've simplified the sort of technical complexity around doing things like the way you socket skills and things like that um, to make it easier to understand. I think that also, like, one thing that PoE needs is kind of like a reset of all of the different modifiers. Because, like, playing this league, for example, I don't know how many times I would go into a map and I would kill the map boss in, like, three seconds, one second, and then there would be, like, a random rare elite that... And it wasn't even empowered by the new league mechanic uh, that would take, like, a minute to kill, right? It would take longer to kill this one NPC than it would to kill everything else. And, like, the reason why is that there's, like, 17 different multipliers that can all, like, align, and it just makes an NPC 
infinitely more powerful than like what you would normally encounter. And I find that very frustrating. It is extremely frustrating to deal with. And I think that most people feel that way. So hopefully with like PoE2, they can kind of do like a reset on those modifiers. So it's easier for like newer players and just for an average player to just see it and be like, oh, okay, I know what this is. But at the same time, Soul Eater? we're making sure that- Yeah, I have like a, um, like my build now can, uh, like I can clear a legion with one clear, with one button, right? Uh, <laughs> only in yellow maps though. Uh, I can't do it in red maps, but I, I can clear a legion in one button. And so guess what happens whenever one of the legion mobs is a soul eater? Well, he goes dead. That's it. I'm fucking dead. I'm dead. That's it. I can't do anything. And it's like, what the fuck is this? But we keep all the depth in terms of character options and things so that you can can't do. So reflect. everything is still there as far as yeah. like what can I do to build my character. It's just that it is easier to do so because you don't have to be worrying, for example, about when you're changing your items that you're going to break mm -hmm. the way your skills are working and things like that. Yeah, like PoE has a lot of like interdependency connected, uh, like inner interdependency uh, of like different resources, right? So it has like you know you need to have this spell, but like this spell also needs a certain amount of main stat. And if you want to have this main stat, you have to use this item, which requires another amount of another main stat. So, like, there's a lot of complexity of, like, kind of fitting everything together. It's like building a house of cards, right? Where, like, if you take one card off and it's, like, halfway down the house, the whole thing falls apart. So, I think that, again, like, it makes it hard to, like, learn and figure things out whenever you can't readily experiment. So I think that Abrasion, actually yeah. uh, new and regular players can tolerate a lot of depth. It's the complexity they can. that we want to try and avoid. It's scarier yeah, to look at than it is to just start playing. If you start playing, you'll probably true. find you'll Extremely just have fun. true. But yes, we're not oversimplifying anything that the POE one players very much love, which is yeah. being able to build your character and break up break the game is the thing I like to do. Exactly. <laughs> So the dodge roll actually came about because we really wanted to be able to find a way to having some skills that took longer to do than other skills. But the problem I think that they kind of beta tested the dodge roll. Like, it, do you guys get the same vibe with this? Like, they kind of beta tested the dodge roll with like the uh, the ruthless like kind of dash mechanic. Because like a after ruthless, I think they they were like trying it out. Yeah, and, and like now they because I use the dash mechanic sometimes, and it's like yeah, it was good that is that skills feel really terrible if you start mm -hmm. them and then you can't get out of them so we really yeah. needed a way Animation to make that locks. interruption be possible and uh, the dodge roll was a really great way to do it we actually already had a philosophy for path of xl2 boss design mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure that everything was dodgeable but previously we were just doing that by running around but i think the dodge roll has actually changed a lot of things especially because you know now that you can expect a player to be able to do that it means that we yeah. can have the expectation and the balance as well we've done fresh design on everything we've that's, taken that's probably definitely true i would say some elements from POE 1 in terms yeah. of monsters, specific monsters, and, and brought them over and kind of because they were fun to play. Like, why yeah. not replicate something that is still fun to play? But of course, it's full fresh coat of paint. Um, there are definitely new systems. I'd say a lot of the monsters are faster, for example, which is where Dodge Roll helps to come into play. We have secondary AI systems that allow the monsters to do skills while they were performing another skill. Much Well, like that's what I thought was really interesting is like, I remember watching, I, I forgot which class it was, I think it was the Druid, and they were on like a beach, and they were fighting like, you know, like in uh, Lord of the Rings Return of the King, there was like a guy, like the uh, the elephants with the guys on them, right? Like the, uh, whatever the fuck they were, Haradrim, or not Haradrim, whatever the fuck. Anyway, and they would like get off, well they can do that in PoE 2 as well. Like they'll be on top of like an animal, and then they'll get off and like attack you how a player can dodge roll to interrupt the skill. Roger? A monster really? can now do the same thing. We have a lot okay. more uh, monsters doing interactions with the environment. They'll interact with the world more. A lot more yeah. spawning from things. A lot more, uh, like in one of our areas, the Isle of Ken, we have monsters riding on top of another monster. There, fuck it. There it is. Just like that. And then when you they yes. get close, they all jump off. That's so fucking cool. The skills in Path of Exile have a lot of- You can't kill the birds! The skill- Wait. Wait, I think he got one. 
<laughs> he got one, bro. Pulse and Path of Exile have a lot of synergy between them. <laughs> oh, in shit. Different ways. We're not restricting ourselves to focusing yeah. on just cooldowns or just Dude, that looks so to fun to play. Menu skills. A lot of situational dependent things, so you want to wait. Like, I just really hope that this game plays like. Like, this is my dream, right? Isometric gear progression Elden Ring. That's what I want. Probably won't happen, but that's what I want. For the right moment to use the thing, you want to adapt the skills you're using to the situation you're in, or you want to be managing a combination of resources or some special yeah. mechanics, or whether you're on low health and taking advantage of that. There are no skills where you feel like they're applicable to every single situation. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to sort of rotate between different things. And, and that's, that's a huge positive. Because one of the biggest criticisms I think is genuine about PoE 1 is that most builds rotate around one skill. Usually you have one skill and maybe a skill that modifies the damage of the other skill. So like, you know, you have... Uh, you know, uh, searing flame or whatever with uh, with righteous fire, or you have you know lightning trap or something else. We all are kind of comboing and making sure you that put down a totem. Interesting interactions together comes from. Also, when we're looking at support gems as well, when we're looking at things, we've got to say, okay, if this is a support gem that you yeah. could just put on every skill in your build, that means it's not a good support gem. They all need to have a very specific. This is going to work well with this skill mm -hmm. that I want to use in this situation, um, as opposed to just something I just spam into um, to each one. And so. you can see, like, they have all the same abilities, right? Front, like, all of these abilities are in. Uh, well, Comet is not in the game, uh, but the other ones are all in the game. There's a lot of design changes that have had to gone on to take into account the way that the new skill system works. Um, but I mean, and you just... can see also like, and you've seen the uh, the evolution of a lot of these like different uh, abilities and mechanics because if you go back and you compare, like even Malachi was not added into the game until like I think the release of of Path of Exile. Like I remember playing the game before Malachi was even in the game. And like uh, the Vol Oversoul, for example, was like the last boss whenever I first started playing, and like Mervale was the first boss. Those bosses really aren't very involved. You know, there's not really a lot going on with them. But if you go back and you play like the, I think the like the Stagnation map, I think is one of them. And then there's also like the Forest one, where it's like the Katava Herald looking guy that has like different water mechanics. Like they've kind of been moving towards Path of Exile too, I think, in the last three or four years. Like, if you look at the actual bosses in the maps and the way that they work, you're seeing a lot of the same philosophy that's already in PoE 1. The way that the new skill system works. Um, but, I mean, even just the more fundamental design changes we made, like, the reason why we changed it so that every skill can be a Bramble Valley? Is because... Well, that's just the uh, that, Harvest, that harvest really Bosses, right? you to have only one think or two so. skills that are the ones you primarily use. But yeah. giving every skill that ability, it means you can have a skill that you just use occasionally. Right. And here we too, we're just like, okay, what are every single... What's every single barrier to being able to use a big variety of skills? Let's try and knock all those barriers down. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like the reason why there's a huge barrier is because of the way like multiplicative values work. Like it's very simple. If you do four times four over and over and over, that will eventually be four times 400, which will be 1600. So like whenever you're looking at multiplicative scaling, you can't even compare that. Like something can be plus 4% multiplicatively or four times multiplicatively. That would actually be better than something that's 10x or 20x additively. You see how this works? Or like with a lower starting value. So it just becomes better to put all of your points into one thing because that way you have all the multipliers working against each other. Like, there's a whole, and, and like, it's very complicated. Like, there's like a whole program that you have to download in order to, uh, in order to understand the game, right? On like that level, it's called Path of Building. And I think that as we approach each different character class, we're yeah. thinking like, how can we make the skills here feel so different than every other class? So with something like the Mercenary now, we're developing how crossbows should work. We kind of really looked at that and thought, okay, yeah. how can we make crossbows just feel completely different than bows? You know, if you look exactly. at the shooters like pistols and, and shotguns and things like that, like uh, what, what about those makes them different from each other? Yeah. And so therefore it makes the whole experience just feel so different than what a bow feels like now. You know, you want that like pull the trigger and it instantly fires, you know, that yeah. kind of instant response type of thing. And I think that as we approach each different character yeah. class, we're thinking like, 
like, how can we make the skills here feel so different than every other class? Every weapon type really feels like a completely different... And, like, you compare that with WoW, where, like, a crossbow and a bow are the exact same thing. A crossbow, a bow, and a gun in WoW do the exact same thing, they play the exact same way, and they're just different types of cosmetics. Whereas, like, in PoE, that's not going to be the case. PoE 2, that's not going to be the case. Also with Valheim, right? Like, shooting the bow versus shooting the Mistlands crossbow, very different situation. And I think that's a good thing play style it's got a different feel to it mm -hmm. it's sometimes even got a different way of how very it difficult to balance yeah it is the controls of the skill system or the game mechanics themselves and the really cool part is that you can mix and match them by having two different weapons and swap between two different play styles uh, combine these things because they're all yeah. gems they're never class locked even though each class has its built-in feel it has the ability to change it up and mix it up and combine the mechanics in some ways that we haven't even predicted yet for each class, it's back to basics. Um, you know, like, let's actually think about what makes this class fun to play, what kind of mm -hmm. issues the players have, what annoys them, what can we do to address those kinds of concerns and make the gameplay just a lot better. Yeah, like, for me, things that I would want to see in PoE 2, um, I would really like to see... I mean, I'd like numbers, right? They're never going to do that, but I would like to have numbers and see what my damage is. Because I think that, like, if you have numbers, it's easier for you to, like, just easily benchmark yourself and say, I'm doing more damage than I was. Maybe also, like, a target dummy would be really nice, so you could kind of compare, like, what's my damage with and without this. Like, even if it's not numbers, I'd like a target dummy. A death recap, I don't think would matter, because there's so many other variables that would happen. So, uh, also, I think that, like, less, less things that can multiply against each other inside of fighting, like, rares. Because I just think it's stupid that sometimes you go up against a rare... And it takes, like, ten times longer than the map boss, and it's ten times more powerful. Like, I, I don't think that's... It's, like, weird design. I don't like it. And uh, there's that. And then also being able to use multiple abilities at the same time in a build without feeling like you're gimping yourself. Uh, that's a build issue. Um, every problem can be solved with more damage, but every problem shouldn't be a problem. Sometimes there are problems that it's like, oh, I think the game would, would play better if it didn't have this problem. My personal favorite of the classes is definitely the Huntress because her spear mm -hmm. gameplay is a real fun mix of situational things of right now I want to be up close, now I want to get away and hit them with some spears from range. I think really the Monk has been my favorite one and I think the reason why is because it's the first class where we I think we really nailed the kind of new feel of combat. We put a lot of effort into making sure that it feels fast, you're going yeah. in and out of combat, there's a lot going on. It just felt so different than what we've done before. It might actually be the Brute. Mostly that's because how it feels to play against bosses for me. I really wish that, like, with the uh, with a two-handed uh, melee spec, I hope they add in a warrior build that plays like a uh, BDO Awakening uh, warrior. Like, with the charges and, like, the spears and, like, the whirlwinds and shit like that. Like, I would love if they could add that in. That is, like, in my opinion, that is, like, fucking peak warrior fantasy. A very, very clean set of combos that are just very fun and satisfying to execute. Mm -hmm. It's the armor break, armor break, armor break, and then you get to, depending on a situation, decide how am I going to utilize this armor break? Am I going to leap in and do yeah. a stun? And if so, a heavy stun, and then the heavy so stun... So they have that, that's, the, you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of, like, Monster Hunter, where, like, I'll see these clips of, like, Monster Hunter, where it's, like, a guy that's, like, just holding a swing for, like, 30 seconds. And then, like, some boss does this crazy, weird fucking thing, and his head lands right in front of the guy, and he just goes bonk. And then it's dead. Armor break. Am I going to leap in and do a stun? It's a great stun? sword, yeah. And if so, a heavy stun, and then the heavy stun goes off, and then I get to deci now decide, okay, mm -hmm. how am I going to utilize that heavy stun? And so you're getting these moments where it's just, you're, you're yeah. setting up a situation that could fork into multiple situations of choice, which can fork into multiple more situations of choice. Either way, it's, it's sure. very fun and very safe. For those who are wishing to join us for Path of Exile mm -hmm. 2, visit our website at pathofexile2.com, wishlist us on Steam, yeah. and I'm looking forward for you to join us playing the beta in 2024. Yeah, they said originally that the beta is going to be out in like June or July. I forgot which one. The old magics, not to be feared, but to be extinguished.
Yeah, this is great. I'm so fucking excited for this game. I think that, like, for 2024, this is the game that I'm most excited for. Like, I, I, I'm not sure that there's any other game that I'm more excited for than this. I guess Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah, there's that. I'm also really excited for that one. Wukong. Yeah, you're right. Like, we're going to have a lot of good games that come out in 2024. So that's fucking amazing. But, uh, yeah. Uh, this game's going to cost a fortune. Uh, yeah, well, it's a free game. So, of course, it's going to cost a lot. Uh, free to play and no pay to win. Yeah. People are saying no numbers, no target dummy, being disingenuous. Most people spend the time inside a POB. I, I think that having a target dummy in the game would just make things easier, right? And again, like, how can you benchmark your damage if you don't have a lot of tools to do that? Like, I, I don't know. I think that having a target dummy would just be good, right? Why not? Why not have it? Now, I think also, like, having some sort of, like, guild housing or something like that would be kind of cool. I'd also like if there was a open space area. You know how, like, in Orioth back in the day, you would go into Orioth and you'd see other actual players? I really liked that. And I wish that you could go out and see other people uh, in, like, cities. I'm not saying open world areas where you're farming. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, shared spaces that you can go to besides your hideout. Guild hideouts already exist? Really? I've never seen one before. What the fuck? Yeah, okay, well then never mind. I'm totally fucking behind on that. I didn't know that at all. Uh, either way, I'd like to see that. That way you could, like, have people show off cool gear. Because, like, being able to inspect and see a person's gear... I think it's really, really important in getting people to be, like, motivated to keep playing the game. Like, uh, because you can see, like, oh, man, this guy has, like, this really badass item or something like that. Yeah, you can inspect their gear and all that. You benchmark your damage by killing the boss and guild housing exists. Well, yeah, you can benchmark your damage by killing the boss, but the problem is that each boss that you fight is different. So, for example, whenever you're benchmarking your damage against a map boss, some map bosses have, uh you know, elemental resistance. Other ones have chaos resistance. And let's say you're using, you know, like at Ziri Flash, so you have like chaos damage added into that. So it's like, okay, well, how, how do you how do you average this together? There's different resistances on different bosses. There's different map mods. There's different uh, affixes that maybe you have going into it, right? And so just in general, I think that, I think it'd be better if you just like, why not have a target dummy? I think that's really the question, right? Why not have this? I can't think of one. Yeah, there's the video. This is really good.